Today on 321 Liftoff, we are at yet another museum that continues the theme of patriotism. We are live on location at the American Space Museum and Space Walk of Fame. Its mission is all about preserving achievement, inspiring innovation, to preserve the history of the United States space program, to honor our nation's astronauts and aerospace innovators, to educate current and future generations about the sacrifice and cooperation necessary to build early space program, and to inspire the gener next generation of scientists, innovators, and explorers who will take our nation and the world in new and exciting directions. We're here to honor and place emphasis on American space workers and others who've made the space programs possible. Want to learn more? Well, you can right here. It's coming right up next on 321 Liftoff. Three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome to 321 Liftoff. I'm Wayne Belden, the president of Belden Communications, the publisher of the Space Coast Fun Guide and SpaceCoastFunGuide.com. We'll be bringing you 321 Liftoff each week, talking about tourism on Florida's fabulous Space Coast. With me is the host of 321 Liftoff, Bonnie King, former deputy director of the Space Coast Office of Tourism, as well as the past president of the Florida Film Commission. Bonnie, are we ready to blast off on 321 Liftoff? Hey, hey we're here. Yeah. Hey, yes, we are. We are at a great place to lift off today because we are at the American Space Museum located right here in Titusville on Florida's Space Coast, surrounded by all things space related, astronaut memorabilia, and a history of the American man space explorations. And our guests today are Karen Conklin, who is the executive director of this fabulous museum, and Mark Marquette, who's the community liaison. And and also host of his show called Stay Curious, which we're going to hear about, an educational and very informative series uh, sponsored by the American Space Museum. So as you know, we are brought to you, 321 Liftoff is brought to you by the Beachside Hotel and Suites located in Cocoa Beach. Great place to, for an overnight vacation destination when you're here. And by Longboard's Tiki Bar, which is located at the Hilton Oceanfront in Cocoa Beach, offering a great ambiance for food and drink when you're staying here in Cocoa Beach. And by the SpaceCoastFunGuide.com, where you will learn what there is to see and do in this fabulous area that we call Florida Space Coast. Is that right, John Belden? You know it, Bonnie. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Very much. Yes, Thank we're glad you're here. Thank you so much. Well, I'm going to tell you, Bonnie, you know, last week we were at Warbird Air Museum, and this week we continue to see how the space program fuels patriotism as we all take great pride in NASA and now also our commercial vendors for all their achievements and the significant legacy they're leaving. So we're going to have a great show today. I'm excited to hear all the different things going on and things that we'll learn. Uh, joining us is our producer, Phil Bird. How you doing there, Phil? I am always curious to learn more. You are a curious one, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, yes. And and of course, joining us, the president of Belden Communications, my father, Wayne Belden. How you doing there, Pop? Well, as usual, I am so fantastic, I can't take it anymore. It's contagious, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's contagious. Absolutely. I'm so excited about being here. You know, last week we were at the Warbird. Now today, I'm, I can't wait to learn all the stuff we're going to learn about the space program here. Uh, th th there's so many achievements, and, and these achievements and historical milestones have spurred advances in other areas of technology, to telecommunications and computers, all offering proof that American ingenuity can achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we're surrounded by all this history Right here at this fantastic American Space Museum. I know Museum. we have this wonderful backdrop. Yeah, uh, when we're looking at both, uh, when we're both looking at Karen and Mark, look at them with their background. It looks like you guys are in You're space. In, are in space. <laughs> you know, come in, Karen. Yeah, come yes. in. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, Mike, Can you Mark's hear me floating now? around. You know, my, yes. my father's always been a big history buff, so I know that this this is his element for sure. So yeah, well, we're, this is. I, we're ready to be curious and learn away. I know it's going to be fun. And so we want to introduce Karen Conklin and Mark Marquette. Thank you both for being here. As we get started, why don't, and we've been here before. Yeah. Um, we did get to introduce you before, but you know, for some new people or whatever, let's get a little bit of history and know um, you're the executive director of the museum. Tell us a little bit about the museum and then we'll hear from Mark. Oh, well, the museum started um, probably back in 2000 and we had... It's kind of like the rock soup. We were <laughs> trying to have people come in and sign up for monuments, the space workers. And we had a little storefront, and space workers would come in and bring in 
manuals and hard hats and sh shuttle tiles and whatnot to show the community what it was. So like they were what sharing the what they had. What they had. Oh. It's kind of cool. It went from there. We got a larger space. More people brought things in. Then companies started giving us items, and then NASA loans us items. Well, so that's that's when you've made it. NASA's yeah. like here. And right. <laughs> and the, the thing is, is NASA, NASA never gives you anything. It's always right. a loan. Right. Uh, and the it's great because we have astronauts who really see the value in what we're doing, and they give us items, and uh, they come in and do uh, book signings well, and, and make appearances. As interesting as that is, I'm curious, where did the term rock soup come from? Yeah, I've never was, heard of that before. You yeah. got me, John. I was going to go, like, rock soup, what does that, that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. There's yeah, a, I, don't, I don't know what that is. There's an old story of soldiers who come across a little town, and they don't have anything, and so they're hungry, and they build a fire in the middle of the town and get a pot, and they put rocks in the in the boiling water, and wow. villagers come out and they say, "What are you doing?" Well, we're making rock soup. Oh, well, I have carrots and I have lamb and I have celery. Nice. And they all start putting things in, you know, from the community. Right. And next thing you know, the whole village eats, and the soldiers go on to the next. I'm going to try it this there weekend. See if my neighbors right. throw me some steak Just and some burgers. I know, and <laughs> I know. I Just have this empty rock. grill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rock soup, baby. Rock soup. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Now I feel old. I'm sorry. No, no. no, no. We just <laughs> learned something new for I all the know. listeners out there. I'm, I'm pretty sure no, m most of us haven't heard of rock soup, so oh, let's right. get it going. We'll I'm trend it. it. And I, I was kind of like thinking, you know, I know that it had something to do with something that wasn't related to rock and roll, but no, that's no, where my no. that's where my head well, was head going. You, you watch next it's, week. It'll be know, trending on social it's, media. Yeah, right. It's, it's, something new. It's bringing the community together. I like it. That's part of what we uh, what we do anyway. Is well, I like the fact that that so many people donated so many items that are here. And the Everything. way that you've written out, you know, you can read the background of, of the personal memorabilia that's there. It's very, very cool how you've done that we, as well. I have to really give credit to Nick Enix. He's our collections manager. And when he came on board, he went case by case, item by item, uh, took a lot of things out because it was a little crowded. And it's more of a museum now than just a collection. Right. Yep. And he researched and made, took the history and... Every item, there's a placard. So you can self-tour. You can have a tour when we have docents on hand. You got great docents, by the way. Oh, boy, don't I ever. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They're amazing. People absolutely that have worked amazing. in the program and know the ABCs They're and everything. They're smart, you know? knowledgeable, and passionate yeah. about it. Absolutely. And he's, yes. n look at look at Mark. I mean, he, look at how passionate he is. I know. <laughs> so passionate. You are, Mark. You, coffee. Tell us what you do. I do whatever Karen asked me to do. Okay, that's, well, that's, that's a, a good, good answer. Right wow. that's, that's a very good, good answer. answer. That's, that's a married, answer. That's a married man right there. He's learned a thing or two. <laughs> Where were you 30 years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already took the trash out, okay? Thanks. Look at you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my story is I'm an amateur astronomer all my life. I have no memories of not uh, wanting to look through telescopes or worship astronauts since I was eight years old. And about 60 years later, uh, I'm involved with this museum. It, it's it's uh, uh, a real privilege to be involved with the American Space Museum. Uh, I caught this lady's passion when I was uh, retired early from Upper East Tennessee, Johnson City, Bristol, Kingsport area, and uh, just kind of had enough. And I was going to do blogs of every space museum that Wikipedia said there's 35 of them in the country. And this was the 17th one I visited, and I talked to this young lady and said I need to round out my column that I wrote for 22 years up there in space and astronomy. Uh, we talked 20 minutes about the column, and then we looked at our watches, and two hours later... Two hours later. Uh, I you were hired. Out, I fell in love with her <laughs> passion and knew what, what this place was all about. And uh, four years later, I say if I know a gallon of knowledge right now, when I came here, I knew about a shot glass full. Yeah. because talking to the real people that lived it and so forth. So right. it's easy for me to get passionate about it. I'm not sure where it comes from her, and Nick is the same way, and we've got great staff that we're just all so passionate about a couple things, that we are in the delivery room of America's space program exactly. when we're in Brevard County. Good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Well, when you showed up, I mean, here you are in the middle of space all around us, mm -hmm. Kennedy Space Center just down the road, etc. And right over the river, you can watch, you know, you see the VAB building and you can watch launches as well. So, I mean, that, you know, you must have been in awe. 
Yeah, I was, and uh, but uh, I don't stay in awe. And Karen and I, we we love our astronauts, and uh, but we're not awestruck by them. We know they're regular people right. and great great human beings and all that, and we celebrate that a lot on our Stay Curious program. But we love our space workers. In my opinion, they are national treasures. They truly are. The stories they have is one of a kind about the Apollo moon race. And then the shuttle 30-year era that's gone. Mm -hmm. These are the only people that can talk about it, that lived it. Right. The, uh, the Apollo guys are in their 80s. She dealt with them uh, tw for 20 years. And uh, the beautiful Space View Park that was created to honor the space workers. And now it's uh, we're here as a museum to honor the shuttle workers that... Uh, you know, for 30 years, uh, uh, changed our lives with all the innovations. And we got a beautiful space station orbiting the Earth that uh, is the fruits of, of their labors. And, and we just saw four astronauts lift off, um, was it the night before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just went to the International Space Station, and I saw the new, I saw the pictures today of them um, actually going on board. Hugs and hugs for everybody. You know, they're there for six months. So wow, that's a long yeah. time. And they finally got a yep. toilet that works now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why they're hugging. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank, oh thank heaven, you're here. You know, it's a good thing. Um, let's talk about since we're on that. With the, like, you are located right here in the heart of of of, T of Titusville. Your original place was over by Space View Park. Let's talk about Space View Park. Great place to watch launches, and you've got the, the handprints there. Let's talk about that area. They're well, looking going, uh, who's yeah. going to say? Well, who's going to uh, talk about it? Uh, uh, it started back in the 80s was the plan. Um, wow. Um, the Mercury Monument was built, uh, completed in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, then the uh, Gemini Monument. It took us 10 years from the Gemini Monument to have the uh, Apollo Monument built, mm. which to me is the crowning joy uh, jewel of, of the monument. It's bronze, 12 panels, the, the bust of Kennedy, which is amazing. Well, I think it's very cool that in, in trying to describe to somebody that when you arrive in Titusville and you go down to Space View Park, that's right on the river. Yes. It overlooks the it overlooks the Kennedy Space Center area where the, the VAB launches. is, the launch pads. A beautiful dock area there. I don't know if they fixed the dock. I know it got they damaged at have, one point. They right. fixed it. Um, but everybody goes there to watch a launch. Yes. Whether it's at 2 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, I know that people gather there and they watch the launches there. But what's really cool about it is these monuments are just gigantic. So you see the big, the big monument for Gemini, a big monument for Apollo, Big monument for Gemini, one for the shuttle, and then you've also got the, the handprints mm -hmm. around the, the, cool the park part, area. Yeah. Right. Well, that was a, a long process. Uh, our chairman of the board uh, took that on, and he went around and met with the astronauts on their terms and their turf mm -hmm. uh, with the clay and got the handprints of all of these astronauts, and they were then cast in bronze, and those are now part of the monument. And it's so cool because when you go yep. there, everybody is putting their hand, yeah. putting their own hands into the astronaut hands, and they're they're kind of tiny. There's no yeah. Their hands are <laughs> some little. Are. And yeah. Some are. Yeah. Yeah. Some are. That doesn't mean anything, just because <laughs> have small hands. No. Right. But, but, well, <laughs> but there's, there's nowhere else in the world that you can do that. Yeah. I, I love watching the, the kids go up and do it. And, yeah. and, and, and like, yeah. when, you know, look, you follow that path. You can be, you're going to be an astronaut. Exactly. You know? and, and, and like, it is. You know, because sometimes when you see like a, a basketball player and their hand is like 10 times the right. size of yours, you're right. like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be eight feet tall or what. You know what I'm, what I'm saying. Yeah. But with this, you could be an astronaut. You can do yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, and that's a big part of what you do here. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We have an education program we call um, Mad Science, and it's a STEM-based program. Uh, some of the things they're going to be doing, we're starting up again uh, because of COVID. We, we quit for a while, but we're going to start up again at the beginning of the year, second Saturday of every month. And some of the things that are in the pike are uh, we're going to create vacuum chambers and air cannons, going to nice. co learn coding. Uh, what what kind of coding? They're gonna learn how to do coding. Learn how to do coding. Oh, okay. Computers. I'm sorry. Did oh, you said air Code. cannon? What is yeah. an air cannon? An air cannon is I well. I've I've seen those. I think. Right. It's where you have the. Um, it's like a smoke you have in it, and then you you hit it, and 
It, it comes out, comes like, a out ring. like a ring. It's oh, kind of okay. like what you used to right. do when you were in junior high and you had yeah. that straw right. and you were spitting through that straw, remember? You, right, right. you guys have some really cool <laughs> experiments here that you do and you do a lot with the schools and the classes and stuff And because I've, I've seen some of those awesome stuff. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually this afternoon we're going to have uh, students from Brevard County Parks and Rec. We do their summer rec, I mean their after school program and every Friday we have a different group come through uh, and they do STEM programs. So part of what we do on the Mad Science, these kids will be doing it on the Fridays. So that's a, now, Mark, are you involved in that, or you, do you are you with the kids, there or do you have somebody else that does that? When Karen asked me, oh, okay, yeah. he, he makes a mean comment. I'll yeah. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked to, I've just... Uh, Three things you need to know, <laughs> brought to you by Longboard's Tiki Beach Grill, uh, but located right there in Cocoa Beach, Florida. This is where we like to like ask our guests three different things, and we can do a combined three things between the two of you. Interesting facts about yourself or the American Space Museum that maybe the average person doesn't know. We're already learning some things, so we just keep it rolling. Yeah. Why don't you guys, uh, between the two of you, maybe give us three interesting things that you want to pinpoint that we should know about yourself or the museum okay the museum received a twenty thousand dollar grant last year from uh, Mc uh, colleen mcquery she's a private individual who came through the museum fell in love with us wow. and really liked what we were doing with her education program and wanted to invest so well, that is fabulous a private citizen and she gave you twenty thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars. do you have her number do you know where yeah where's where she located <laughs> that? does she want to do a podcast yeah that's right, right. <laughs> that's awesome yeah she she was really um really impressed with what we were doing because you guys are doing it right help. well thank you yes thank absolutely you. I mean, and seriously, them, you you think about it, you're moving the community that much that so they're like, look, I want to, I'm 25,000, that's that's no small feat. That's Maybe that's what we need to do, feet. John. We need to move the community a little bit more. <laughs> that's <now>. right. <laughs> right. We would take a donations here at 321 Liftoff. That's okay. okay. So that's the first one. Uh, Mark? Well, you, no, you're never quiet, Mark. Come on, man. I know, Mark. It can even She's be like about yourself. Well, that's one thing. Um, well, that yeah. was, that's that's one. Okay. We need two more. Uh, we need three together. Yeah. We're nonprofit, and of course, you know, we need bushel baskets full of hundred dollar bills all the time. And uh, uh, we got uh, the Marie Louise G. West endowment gave us five thousand dollars to do oral histories. That our Stay Curious program uh, is evolving into doing more conversations with mm -hmm. space workers. We love that. I know uh, we're going to get into that more here in a little but, bit. You're uh, still curious. But, That's a great uh, thing. I do. We do. I do want to brag about that our team was uh, the nonprofit of the year. At the Cocoa, Cocoa Beach, Beach Visitors Beach. Bureau Great this job. year. Bonnie, you were there. I was and, there. I saw you and, walk uh, up and say thank you. Yep. I was pretty flabbergasted because we were one of nine nonprofits up there among the humane societies and hospices and stuff right. like that. But um, we should have been there because we're not profit. Just, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it, well, <laughs> yeah. The way we're going. I'm sorry. Then, uh, I'm sorry. Then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you don't get me speechless too often, but you got me speechless on that one, Dad. Good job. <laughs> and, All right. Uh, well, another interesting fact is that our guests can come and launch a rocket in our Cape Canaveral gallery that we feel uh, is a pretty good replica of what happened out there at Cape Canaveral. And Pad, uh, uh, a lot of our old timers put that together. And we're just. So many unique things here. The, jutton, the button that pushed John Glenn, the button that they pushed to launch John to Glenn, something. the hard hat to wear him. But oh, one thing I've got to mention is that as Karen and, and uh, Nick Enix, our collection manager, uh, that I'm proud of the museum about is there's nothing in this museum that, that they don't know the provenance of. They don't have the paperwork to trace it. We've got a cool vehicle assembly building model in there, the yeah. VAB model. Just looks like a cool model of it. It was built before, it was a wind tunnel test model, before they built the VAB or even made plans for it. This was the wind tunnel thing, and Nick has the paperwork he for that. Paperwork Our <laughs> models just aren't cool models. They're uh, replicas that were built to show the congressmen, the, the contractors, and so forth, what they were talking about. And, and so uh, that's where I get excited is, is we're, this is real space history. You can almost uh, smell space on some well, you, stuff. Well, you guys have a lot yes. here. We appreciate that. That's the three things you need to know brought to you by, again, Longboards, Tiki Beach Grill. Longboards are located there in Cocoa Beach, Florida, at the Cocoa Beach Hilton. And they've always got things going on. they got live music Friday through Sunday. This Friday from 6 to 9, you got Tropical Vibes, a great, great band there. Saturday, 6 to 9, Weeks Brothers. And Sunday from 1 to 4, Reggae Band. Everybody loves the reggae. So go on, check out Longboard Tiki Beach Grill. they got a beautiful two tiki huts there that got 
uh, awesome furniture, great food, great drinks, and uh, check them out. Tell them we sent you a Longboard Tiki Meat Grill. So thank Sounds you so much. Sounds good. Yes. Sounds like fun. It, it absolutely great is. Place. Great, great place. Great my, fa- my, fa- my favorite tiki hut. That's oh. it. He's a tiki man. He just loves those thatched roofs, doesn't he? He does. I'll, I'll bet Wayne likes a steel drum. He does. Oh, it, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, puts you in I the mood. Like yeah. When right. you come off the beach, that's what you yeah, kind of, yeah. I don't know, that's just the yeah, I, I get you, you man. Right? I get you, man. Yes. Yeah, I got you, man. <laughs> You're so good. So tell us now, let's talk about your Stay Curious and tell us what that is. Well, born out of the pandemic, okay? Everybody had to scramble. We're a nonprofit. Karen and I uh, have what we call uh, spaghetti thoughts. We throw spaghetti on the wall. Some of it sticks. Some of it's got sauce. Some of it's got some meat on it. Most of it just falls off on the floor. Right. And uh, Rock uh, but, soup. But I'm, I'm always like that. I'm not afraid to, you know, hear no or that, that, that's a bad idea. You just keep plugging. And uh, so I said, we got to let our, our nonprofit supporters know that we're out there, that we're going to be closed. We don't know how long. Right. There's something called Facebook Live. Let me try to do it on the phone and show a few things. My astronomy background, I've given hundreds of talks to astronomy groups all over the, uh, the east coast of America from Michigan to Key West. Uh, so I'm a natural to talk to people. So it evolved into that where all of a sudden from our phone we've got some cameras and let's try to go each, each was a different level right. and and uh and we started getting attraction on it and i was told 50 followers on facebook's good and hell we had 100 150 sometimes right uh so uh she kept telling the board of directors we're telling the, we're trying we're letting everybody know we're out there all right, right. That we're closed and uh and uh you know uh it, it's turned into uh, something we never thought it would evolve into, definitely. Marty Winkle, who uh, is a fabulous volunteer here at the museum and worked on the lunar module in the Grumman era and on the shuttle era. He's my co-producer and, and uh, cameraman on that. And we were talking, I mean, we were literally doing stuff and showing, printing out pictures, astronaut birthdays. Right. We love astronaut birthdays. We love, we celebrate the shuttle flights. These people are in our communities doing great things. There were 350 shuttle astronauts, or like in our community and other wow. communities, and we celebrate them because they're so unique. They're most of them are so humble. You wouldn't even know who they were at a grocery store, you know. Uh, so it turned into a monster. And I kept telling Karen, I said, "I'm waiting for someone to come through the door to take us to the next level and know all this technical stuff that Phil does here, your wonderful podcast director." Yes. And uh, Jessica Galloway was that lady that came in about six months ago and uh, with uh, a computer program that looks like a television broadcast, we've taken it to the next level. And that's how we got this this nice grant. And we hope to keep going on from there. But we really love talking to our space workers. Like I said, they're national treasures to us in every sense of the word. And we feel we're doing important entertainment value with Stay Curious. Mm -hmm. But we're also recording space history. And uh, I do astronomy on Mondays. And then we've got a fabulous docent, uh, Travis Thompson, uh, for his career, uh, particularly the last 10 years, he was the lead of putting all the astronauts in the spaceship up on the White Room, 195 feet. Cool. So we have tales from the White Room with Triple T and uh, things like that that, that we're, we – we're not done thinking yet and throwing the spaghetti on the wall. Some uh, right, you know, right. And we have wonderful space workers come in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 it's just a uh, we love the I, interacting space history today with uh, I mean space history thirty years ago with how it applies to today too. Right. And I enjoy trying to intersperse that and always always celebrating. The fact that in Brevard County, the heritage here is like none other in the face of the earth. It is. I mean, I, I, I spent 35 years in Tennessee. That's coal mines, you know, was right. coal mines, seven states, 35 counties. And I just love sharing and, and letting you locals that don't think of it in the perspective of like, this is the only place in the world we've sent humans to the moon. It, in it, this county, Brevard County, well, and, and, and that's 10 miles away is the launch pad from where we're sitting. And three places in the world to put people in orbit. And just the jobs. And I talk about Grandpa Jones worked on Apollo and Aunt Sally on the shuttle and yep. Cousin Bill and, and my niece Julie are working on SpaceX and Blue Origin now. So well, That's what I was just going to say, that look at all. We, we've got the past. We've got mm-hmm. look what's happening for the future. Yep. It's all happening like right here. So you're going to have mm-hmm. more stuff to add. You guys are going to need a bigger museum. Well, yes. we, so if anybody's got a larger building like to, we'll to build to us, that yeah. would be great. 
Yes. And, well, and Titusville, t- I mean, you talk about the county, yes, but Titusville is such a great hub. I mean, Titusville has a campaign called Launch From Here. Yes. And it's because this this is no better place than, than to launch right here from Titusville. And it's space, it's business, it's, it's everything. When I moved to Titusville uh, back in 2013 and I moved into the neighborhood, it, it mostly retirees in my neighborhood, a quiet neighborhood, and they all came out to greet me. And I quickly learned when I moved here, everybody was attached to the space cro- program in one form or fashion at one point in their life. And it, it was just constantly hearing these stories and hearing the history and, you know, from, from workers at the Cape. And just it's so much history here. And that's why a great thing but coming here to the American Space Museum is that you get to just, you, you meet these docents and the firsthand knowledge. You get to see things that you can actually touch and interact with the exactly. space. And, and, in, and it's in an affordable way. And you can really, you don't have to feel rushed. Take your time. This is a gem here. And to see how you've grown and with mm-hmm. with the Stay Curious program, it's it's really Thank a you. huge compliment to you. And guys. I love the the launch console, the old launch console yes. that you've got here. I mean, people just that's what we remember seeing as a kid when they had the TV on and you could see right. everybody at the console just waiting for the countdown and everything. And those are my memories. So when I always I love that console. In fact, if I remember correctly, we did a photo shoot here one time with uh, fashion models that were <laughs> around the around the console. I don't know if you were here when we did that. I think you were. I think I was here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember bringing them in, and it was very cool because mm-hmm. here they are, you know, obviously wearing uh, fashionable clothes or whatever, but they were all around the, the museum in different locations. A great promotion, obviously, for the museum oh, as well. Now, the other cool thing... When you first walk into the museum and you step into, you have like separate rooms that that are maybe geared to a certain era. Can you can you tell us about that? I mean, don't you have one for women as well? Oh, definitely. We have uh, the women in space, and every woman who has uh, launched has been um, recognized recognized around the around the room. And how many are there now? Well, it depends on who you have, but about 67 67 uh, women women. have been to space. And from Valentina Tricia Coe were the first one to the the lady launched yesterday uh, uh, up there. Right. uh, And what's really wonderful is there's a a photograph of the women. and But the first line underneath their stats tells what they did before they became an astronaut. And none of them started out as astronauts. They mm. were doctors, they were engineers, they were pilots, they were, um, you know, just everyday jobs. Right. And then they became astronauts. But obviously awesome. very, very smart, capable yeah. women. It's interesting. I want to go back to last week when we were at the Valiant Air Command and the Air and the Warbird Museum. We had the same conversation about women pilots and how mm. I believe they started out with 99. There were 99 women that started this organization now, which is international organization. But I just love bringing up that fact of how we how we talk about women. And it's a great it's, it's a great way for young ladies right now and young girls that come into the museum to see what can they do. Yep. You know, where, where, where's their role in space or how, how can they be involved? And, uh, you know, sky's the limit, man. They can do anything they want. Well, and, I, I, yeah. I remember walking. Uh, we have security cameras. And I remember looking up on one of the cameras. And this girl, probably in her late 20s, um, she fell down to her knees. And I thought, oh, my goodness, she tripped. So I hurried down. And, you know, right there in the doorway of the the, uh, women's gallery. And I said, oh, are you okay? Are you all right? And she goes, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I was just so overwhelmed. Wow. It literally made her go to her knees. Wow. That she was taken. That's unbelievable. It was was wonderful. And um, she was, one, very apologetic for scaring me. But (laughs) she couldn't get get over the fact that there were that many women. And it was that we were honoring all of the women. Yeah, well, many, many great women have paved the way for that. And, 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 and now you have, you know, I've got a daughter. She's 12 years old, and she has opportunities now that weren't there 50 years ago. Well, she walks in that room, mm-hmm. and she can find herself. That's it. I'd like to interject that this, that emotional experience is not uh, rare here. Uh, no. uh, we see it all the time. I've had two instances where men with a shock of gray hair come into one of our galleries and walk over to something and say that's the manual i used right there that's the machine i used and mm-hmm. they uh these gentlemen got teary-eyed right and i go i see that's affecting you you know what are you thinking about and uh both of them said uh something like you know i was 27 years old i loved all these people i worked with we were going to the moon 
we felt like we were doing something and i just loved it and yeah. and uh they I are mean, a uh, piece uh, of history yeah, and i mean i get hair on the arm right. arms rising just thinking of these people that that karen and her staff and charlie mars our godfather uh, the chairman of the board all these years and and the whole board has provided this venue not just for guests and tourists to see but for space workers to come back and relive what yep. they what they did 30 years ago now i was a newspaper reporter i'd like to go back to that uh newsweek newsroom i was at someday and and see the old typewriter right. i worked on or something like that or i for sure would wish they'd asked me for a hundred dollars to put my name on the, the building on madison avenue like we do space workers here you give Come us a hundred dollars and you're in apollo you'll we'll put your name and who you work for on the pylons the out monument. there at space view park so yep. it's just so unique and and uh you know uh, like i said i'm just so blessed to have met karen and 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 you know her enthusiasm uh, rubbed off on me and Nick and th this whole well, staff the, came the here first, about four years ago. The first 20 minutes was just to kind of get to know you, and the next uh, two hours was setting the hook. Yeah, right, right. So, right. 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 That's, a fisherman, well, that's a fisherman right there. I told her astronomy was the shiny object that would draw people in, and we're going to get back to doing plenty of uh, stargazing here but, on our property for the public uh, in January and February. Uh, you know, we know how optically things look, and right. we've been – we're, we've been so we think we've done excellent job navigating this covid stuff because we know as a nonprofit you can't take sides on anything and uh, uh she knows that i take to her all the time some things that i question or or have had things that happen to me that i don't know you know what we should do about uh on there but uh i think we've done excellent job at that and and uh, uh uh, and, and actually COVID. poised ourselves to be stronger coming out of this COVID because of of uh, not just stay curious, but our whole staff was kept in place. Bonnie, you've been part of our board. You know you guys could have just said, why don't you just go home for six months and, yeah. and come back, and and uh, we'll call you a month before we open to dust the cobwebs off. But, nope. Uh, you guys oh, stayed learning. You go. guys here stayed learning, go. and it's good because it's time for Space Coast Trivia. Space Coast Trivia brought to you by Beachside Hotel and Suites in beautiful Cocoa Beach, Florida. We're going to find out exactly how smart we all are here at the table, and I think we have stiff competition, guys. I think we do. <laughs> yeah, you I guys think have we some do. very yeah. stiff competition yeah. here. Yeah. So today's game is space, space. trivia and um, uh -oh. just space and planetary trivia. So, oh, okay. Okay. So, so the teams. It's all Mark. Can I phone a friend? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do have you guys at a slight uh, handicap. I have the three of them versus two of you. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. All I right. feel a little better. All right. All right. Okay. So wait. Okay. So I'm with them. No, no, no. You're with us. No, oh, you're with oh, us. Bonnie, oh, you oh. can't be trading this because oh, okay. you think you got a better chance with them. <laughs> we'll take Bonnie. No, 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 no. She's ours. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So, uh, Fighting over you. I changed the rules a little bit. So, like we did last week. Okay. Everybody's going to answer. So, okay. Team Bell, Team Belden, Team Three, Two, One. You guys pick one answer. Okay. And then you guys pick. The other answer. So okay. we can work together to submit we an answer. Oh, okay. 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 All right. First question. How old approximately is the universe? Is it 1 billion years old? Is it 13.8 billion years old? Mark's writing with a is pen. Is it 17.2 <laughs> oh, billion years old? Or is it 22 billion years old? Team Belden. I think the 17.2 is in my head for some reason. Really? Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I, I'm going to go with 22. 22. Okay, so we got to. What do you Bonnie think, Bob? Hey, I'll go with 17. 17. All right. Well, we got to decide as a group. Okay, 17. Okay. 17.2. 17. I know what's going to happen now, okay. but I'll stay with I, I know. Go ahead. Right. Okay, you guys, what go do you ahead, think? 13.8. And the, that answer is correct. Yeah. Oh, wow. I told you. Which answer? Ours is. No, Mark. 13. 13. I knew we were in trouble. Mark took his pen. He's like, I know the answer. And we. And we <laughs> I, know, I, I told you I wanted to take 13.8. You said 22. <laughs> Play back the tape. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we know that because of the Hubble telescope that is one of our special galleries here about the Hubble telescope. So okay. Ask right. about hamburger. I'll beat I Mark's know, right? butt. Let's go. Right. <laughs> Rock soup. <laughs> That's all right. All right. Just, Rock don't, soup. just don't ask me about 18th century literature, okay? <laughs> <laughs> next time. Next time. All right. Next question. Name the spacecraft that carried the first astronauts to the moon. Is it Apollo 11? Is it Sputnik, Mercury, or Apollo 13? Team Belden. It's Apollo 11. I feel like it was a trick. It would have to have been Apollo 11. Okay. John, uh, I'm, going, I'm deferring to these two. Okay. Apollo 11 then, yeah. What, what do you guys think? You said uh, to the surface of the moon? I said. You said 
Name the spacecraft that carried the first astronauts to the moon. Yeah, Apollo 11. That is correct, so both of okay. you guys get yeah. the point. Mark, you're like me. I was like, there's got to <laughs> be a trick in here. If you don't know that, you pull your Brevard <laughs> County birth certificate card. Okay. <laughs> no, but like like you, I was like, did you say? Because I'm like, there has to be a trick in here somewhere. Well, if it said orbited, it would have been Apollo 8 right. in that, 1968. That's yeah. what right. I I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember him saying, yeah. yeah. So All right. We got it. We Third got it. question. So these are about the planets here. All right. Which is the smallest planet in our solar system? Is it Mars? Is it Uranus? Mercury or Venus? Team. <laughs> okay, you pronounced. <laughs> did the safe way, didn't you? Yes. All right. Give me the options again. All right. There. Mars, Uranus, Venus, or Mercury. What's the smallest in our unit in our uh, solar system? Well, Mark, why don't you say it first, and then we'll see if we agree <laughs> yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Guess, uh, it begins with an M. I, I was going to say Mercury. Mercury. Yeah. So everybody yeah, says Mercury. Mercury. It yeah, is correct. Mercury. So you guys all get a point. That's what I was going to say too. Mercury is just yeah, right. barely larger than our own moon, and the moon is half the size of Mars, and Mars is half the size of Earth. Big in our minds, but Mars is really small. Can we just give the game I, to Mercury? Right, right. I, I mean, yeah, well, I just, we'll see. Okay. Wow. Well, speaking of the size, what's the largest planet in our solar system? Is it Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, or Neptune? Saturn. Jupiter. Oh. Wait. What did Bonnie say? Jupiter. What did you guys say? What do you think, Dad? I don't know. I thought so, Saturn. I thought. But. <laughs> so choose. You, you're thinking Saturn because it has all those rings. All right. Choose. Bonnie seems pretty confident. I'm going to go with Bonnie. Jupiter. Okay. It is Jupiter. All right. All right. See, I'm a smart man. I know how to manage. <laughs> so big, Saturn and everything else can fit inside of Jupiter, and there's so, a lot of room it left. I think we got to do right? like one. That's great. That we just have to answer qu- first or something. The very, the very last uh, one is okay. Everyone. So we got uh, two more questions here. All right. Uh-oh. All right. What year was Pluto declared not a planet? Ooh. Is oh, it wow. 2004, 2005, 2006, or 2007? That pen's moving again. <laughs> I right. thought Pluto was a dog. <laughs> That's what yeah. I was thinking yeah. of. Yeah. Team 321. Who do you all think? Boy, that, I don't know. five, six, or seven? C. All right. Do I'll do C. I, 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 I know. I don't know. All right. I am not sure. Which I'm not sure either. That tech is 2006. It's though. it's always a planet in my yeah. mind. So yeah, it's it's Me never too. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so, so that's a non I met Clyde Tombaugh. It is a planet. It is a planet. They refused to answer and we so did answer. I say 2006. <laughs> and it is 2006. All right. All right. So yeah, very it's good. Four it's 4 to 5. So the, the last question is just whoever answers okay. it first. Whoever okay. Answer, so answer, don't wait. Blurt out this one. Just this one's two. Out. So to give them a chance here. What is the third planet from the sun? Earth. You guys won. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. We just Earth had a chance. Oh, Thank you very much for playing Space Coast Thank Trivia. You. That is brought to you by wow. Beachside Hotel and Suites in Cocoa <laughs> Beach, Florida. Check them out at BeachsideHotelCocoaBeach.com. They have everything at Beachside Hotel and Suites. We love them over there. They've got an awesome breakfast to get your morning started. They've got duck dive mermaids around the pool. That is heated, by the way. So even this time of year, you want to check out their pool, duck dive bar. And they're actually doing right now Toys for Tots. So when you come out here to visit, bring yourself a little gift to give to Toys for Tots for a great cause. Always something going on at Beachside Hotel and Suites. You'll love it over there. Check them out. We appreciate them being our sponsor. Absolutely. And they are at uh, BeachsideHotelCocoaBeach.com. Yeah. Take a look and look at their pictures. And also, Mark, don't you go out there occasionally and you do an astronomy uh, astronomy show out there on I Saturday do. nights or whatever? He once just shows up as a mermaid, I heard. From yeah. Uh, my competition. I, I put stars in their eyes, you know. Uh, but I know that that's going. Kids just love that. It, well, it I say is, kids, uh, but the adults, too. Of course, our partner, uh, Michelle Martindale, the, the, uh, one of the sales managers there, uh, yeah, I do run first quarter moon do on a Friday, do a little moon gaze. And, of course, planet Saturn and Jupiter are up there, and it's just something extra for her guests. Their guests there, they love it. We love – we give out some swag at the museum, talk about the museum. So any kind of outreach like that, I'm, I'm game for. I have telescope, we'll travel. You were made uh, for that, Mark. Because, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you really so, were. Uh, you know, it's uh, – uh, the older you get, lugging them telescopes around doesn't get any easier, but – uh, no, we really enjoy our relationship with them. Uh, in fact, we hope to do a couple events there at Beachside Hotel. We were going to do a masquerade ball. That, yeah, I was just going to mention we, uh, that, the Cosmic can, Ball. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that next o- October, a Cosmic Masquerade Ball. We just felt it wasn't uh, optically right to do it this October, so that's fine. But uh, uh, like I said, as a nonprofit, we have to kind of go by different rules, and, and, and I agree with those, and we're – we, like I said before, I think under Karen's leadership, we've navigated this nasty pandemic pretty well. 
And uh, and I have uh, to put a plug in for you because if you're if you're going to stay the same, the cosmic ball, the entertainment is going to be. Tell me who the entertainment's going to be. Is it still going to be St. John's Wood? Which is Beatles. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Bonnie's a big I'm Beatles there, fan. Yeah, you guys I'm need to see St. John's Wood. They play mostly down the south end of the county, but they're 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 all. Uh, they don't need the money. All right. They're they're engineers, and so they love it for fun, and they're very good. And but it's fun. Uh, but we also working on something maybe for the spring there that we uh, might try to get a couple fundraisers there. Right. I'm I'm all about the the five thousand. Uh, dollar type stuff karen even characterized me as picking up nickels and dimes for us here you know and then and uh nothing wrong know, with that uh, our boards well, one, you know to get the, the the big things like that we need the whole board and the whole right. museum on board with it there but um you know we're just uh constantly thinking of things that uh, but but what but the, the emphasis again is our steam education you know uh, not just our outreach uh, uh but uh karen has had a strategy that i've talked about uh for uh years uh that uh, we want every fourth grader in the county to come through this museum and there's five thousand of them why because that's the age they get astronomy and science in their class and then then the uh, uh space club uh space coast club takes them out to kenny space center in, in sixth, sixth grade, grade mm -hmm. so they know what they're talking about but that fourth grade that's where you get their minds inspired when you think back about your your elementary school and and that's where you kind of formulate oh, that's what i want to be when i grow up type of thing and uh, five thousand kids coming through here every year is a 250 to 300 thousand dollar project and who wants to own that out there and put your name on it and brag about that you've here in the 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 delivery room of america's space program you are inspiring the next generation Absolutely. it's the feeder program pardon me Feeder program. Yeah. Feeder yeah. program, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. let's talk. I know you have an event coming up where you have astronaut Nicole Stott coming here. Yes. So tell wonderful. us about that. I'm looking forward to that. Is she one of the 68? Oh, absolutely. She has been twice. Uh, Karen, you want to talk about Nicole? You've known her for a few years. Well, and well you've read her book. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I stole <laughs> you've your book from you. Stole and read my it. book, right? Yeah. Well, uh, back to here. Earth. She'll be here on the 20th. Yeah. And she's very the one of the things that she says. I've watched some of her TED talks and whatnot that has stuck with me. And I don't know if, if you walk in uh, from the front, you'll see that there's a sign that says "Welcome Earthlings." And she says that what she learned when she was in space was three things. And she says the same three things you learn in elementary school: one, we're all Earthlings; two, we live on a planet; and three, the only border is that thin blue line that separates us from space mm. true so um, true she brings that message uh also she's an artist uh and mm -hmm. uh, she lives in saint petersburg and she's using art and space as healing all right uh she's uh, uh we want her involved more in our museum she's been involved with several things that karen's done down the line but uh her emphasis as an astronaut is that we are on a spaceship earth mm -hmm. but we're not passengers we're all crewmates. crewmates. We have to teach each. We have to be act like crewmates to save our planet. Her book's got seven chapters of solutions, not not belly aching about the problems, you know, on there. And uh, we can't wait to get her in the museum here. We've got a couple special things that we want to do for her. And well, that'll and, be uh, very cool. Uh, That's November twentieth, and that is Saturday from eleven from to from three. Uh, eleven to three. Yeah, and 11. at two o'clock, there'll be a special Facebook live. Yeah, we're Stay gonna, curious. Which also YouTube and tw Twitch, we're doing our, our live program on there. So, And we had Ron Guerin here a couple of weeks ago. He did a book signing here. He'd spent over 200 days in space. And the, um, right before him was Andy Allen. Yeah, so. astronaut Andy Allen was on our show. Uh, nice. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and it's great to have the astronauts supporting us, all right? We're not, of course. Uh, uh, we're, uh, that's sort of the icing on the cake because it's the space workers that, 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 keep this place fueled all right uh we've got wonderful people out there like hazel banks and oh, she's john tribe and yes. and on and on uh that that uh, regularly contribute financially to our museum mm -hmm. and have uh since way before i came here and uh you know they like what the direction karen's taking it and and what our staff is doing and uh, like i said i think we're poised to, for 2022 to be real strong but 
Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, we need bushel baskets full of hundred dollar bills to keep well, us going. Well, let's here. talk about twenty twenty two because I know that you have some mm-hmm. ideas that you have floating around that you're going to be looking at bringing into twenty twenty two. Can you share some of the things that you plan on doing? Well, we look to have uh, at least four auctions through uh, twenty. Your auctions yeah. do very well. They do. They do really well. And I'm amazed at how many products that you get and you get it from uh, not only from astronauts and also from the space workers mm-hmm. as well but there's a lot of memorabilia yeah, out there valuable I, valuable and i am amazed at how many people out there get involved with the auction and how much money you raise well there is that was something new to me when i joined the board and i found out about it. i mm-hmm. thought thank heaven for these auctions because that's helping keep the museum alive, alive. And people just need to know that. So okay. tell us about that. Four auctions that you're planning next year. Next year, right. Probably every quarter, right? Something like that. Mm-hmm. Every quarter. We're going to start in March and then go every 9 to 11 weeks. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's Our good. next one's December 4th. Right. And like everything here at this museum, it took a special person to take this to the next level. Chuck Jeffrey. Does, Chuck Jeffrey. 30 years of memorabilia expert and... Um, he got involved with the museum by buying the uh, first day covers off of our website. Right. And uh, again, got the passion for it. But you know Chuck, and you know how he is about space and all that stuff. Um, and uh, uh, this, he has taken this auction to one of the top five in the world. People now are looking at this thing. Over 400 lots will be on there December 4th. Some you can buy for 50 bucks. Some there's might be a a, te- uh, a couple thousand dollar items Five on thousands. there, but real astronaut autographs, authenticated and and uh, however I say that word, <laughs> authentic <laughs> authenticated, uh, yes. real space <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and, and, and here's the beauty of it: is a lot of this comes in through the door. Dad died. We found this stuff in his closet. We don't know what it is. She will take it with Nick and go through and see if it's something for the collection or whatever, or auction, or we also have an eBay presence for things under $100. But um, if they want to consign it, they make some money off of it. We take a small percentage of of the consigned stuff, but if they donate it to us, then we make all of it. Right. And and, uh, so uh, it's just, it's, it's been amazing how Chuck and the whole team there have made this one of the top five auction houses uh, for space memorabilia and and uh, <laughs> that's incredible uh, it, wow. it is incredible and the price is fetched for like an eight by ten photograph on photographic paper of buzz aldrin's uh the, the visor shot we call him standing there uh if it has red letters on it from nasa That'll sell for anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. Now, what do you mean red 10? letters? What do you wow. mean by that? Uh, NASA's photos. Some have numbers and letters on them. Those are sort of internal, given to the executives and so forth. The ones that don't have the numbers on them were given to the media. Okay. So there was less okay. run on there. But yeah, there's all kinds of little nuances there, oh, okay. Bonnie. Like well, any collection will. And as thing. a collector, they'll know. Uh, and right. As a collector, they'll know. But well, it's just it's just amazing. But. You know, if you if you want to start buy a few things, uh, you know, just to put on your knickknack shelf or something like that, you can do that on eBay. Uh, if you're a serious collector and collecting autographs or crew signed autographs and stuff like that, yeah, there's so um, many people that just love space and, and just want to have something. Well, well now I just wonder if you might be interested in something that I have. I must share a story. Okay. Um, huh? My husband worked out there, and he worked in um, the room. I don't even know the name of the room, to be honest with you. I mean, what wife knows what their husband does out at the <laughs> Kennedy Space Center? But, he, of course, you know, his name badge, they put your name, your last name first. So it's like, you know, it's, his name is Charles, Charles King. Mm-hmm. So when uh, Prince Charles came to oh, visit the Kennedy Space Center, and, of course, he went around the room King to shake Charles. everybody's ah, name, yeah. he ah. sees my husband's name tag, and, of course, it says King Charles. Charles. Uh-huh. And so he turns to my <laughs> husband, looks at his name badge, and he says, you have something I want. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, wow. it's an awesome I'll memory. Bet you that guy does. His mother's going to live forever. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but anyway, I just had I just had to share that. I like it. Well, Interesting. If, if people want to um, bid during the auction, all they need to do is go to our website, mm-hmm. and we have a link to the invaluable. You can, auction house. You can place your bids ahead of time. Right. Uh, the auction nice. will be here in this room uh, be on December 4th, live on uh, several things. But Starts you can come at noon. Here. So they can go yeah. to spacewalkoffame.org. Right. Correct. Or American Space Museum. Okay. Uh, and we'll get you there, too. Great. Space Walk of Fame, to clear that up, is the foundation that 
that that uh, uh, is the nonprofit foundation of our organization, and right. the American Space Museum is it's the, underneath is the, underneath uh, the foundation. U.S. Spacewalk of Fame. Okay, that's are a you, good clearing up. That's good. Have um, a fast talker auctioneer. Oh. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good job. Not fast <laughs> enough to get through 400 lots. Uh, <laughs> it I know. takes a six or seven hour day. You guys, wow. you guys, I don't know if you know about this. You guys should start. You guys should put some of those stuff as NFTs. Those are selling for like 400 thousands of dollars. All that, the, all the what's an stuff? NFT? I'll tell you guys later. But this NFT? something that you should, you okay. should, you should look into. I, oh, I've uh, heard of that. Bonnie, we, you know, we're winding up here. We wanted to make sure we talk about in 2022 our celebration yes. series. Oh, okay. Because we're always celebrating. The, the the birth of the space age here all right and we started this in the pandemic and had to shut it down but we'll take a theme every month in january's animals in space february's diversity and in, in, nice uh, okay uh, space uh, marches uh, women marches women in space and with that we will bring in some of these space workers who who i tell you i call our national treasures to, to share their story so you can be one-on-one -on -one with them in there and there's a lot of people that walk around with a little little autograph book and stuff to have spacewalkers sign their little books in there. Okay. So uh, these things will be broadcast on our, our social platforms too, of course. But uh, we want the, our guests to be able to talk to the people who launched the shuttle or put the astronauts in their spaceship or, or did other jobs that, uh, you know, that are so important. And some of the most important jobs in the space program are the janitorial skills we tell kids because mm -hmm. everything has to be clean to go to space and That's so right. forth. There is no career at Kennedy Space Center, that it, or that's not out at Kennedy Space Center, whether it be janitor or rocket scientist. Right. Okay. right. Well, let's. Uh, one thing I want to talk about too is your gift shop because you can just walk in killer here, go gift into shop. A, a. You are right. It's a killer gift shop, and with Christmas coming up, what a great place for mm -hmm. uh, for Christmas gifts. So I wanted to give you a uh, a little uh, nod for that because people can come in and oh, just you. you know pick up some really cool stuff that's mm -hmm. located right here. So we'll give we got. Well, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, Speaking I of that, so. it's time for Space Ghost Fun Guy Deal of the Week, brought to you by Space Ghost Fun Guy and SpaceGhostFunGuy.com. This week's Space Ghost Fun Guy Deal of the Week is Florida Key Lime Pie Company. Yum. We love Florida Key Lime Yum. Pie Company. If you haven't been out there, you definitely want to go out and check them out. Pretzels. Oh pretzels. pretzels. The pretzels. The ice cream. The ice cream. They have homemade ice cream, which is absolutely incredible, um, that they actually bring in. They have the Florida's best key lime pie. A lot of restaurants actually serve it here on the Space Coast. Saltwater taffy. They've got hot sauces. Sweetie. Gator, Sweetie yes. the Galligator. That's actually the promotion for them. Is that on Saturday and Sunday from 2 to 6, all week, every week, from Saturday to Sunday from 2 to 6, you actually see Sweetie the Alligator, which if you don't know who Sweetie the Alligator is, check out Florida, the Florida Key Lime Pie Company on their website or on social media. Uh, Sweetie has become a national uh, a national celebrity. They're a local, local alligator there that comes out. So you can actually go see him. Check out the, the Key Lime Pie. Check out the hot sauce. Sauces, the pretzels, uh, the ice a cream. A lot of hot. They have a whole wall of just the hot sauce. Phil and I actually did yeah. a, a test on that one time. We took the challenge, and boy, that was Torture. hot, right? It was. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe you guys. I think did I beat that. him out on it, but check you, them. You look like you were crying the rest of the day. Well, that's just because I was just sad for something <laughs> else. But you, he was dad, sad for me. He was. Da, sad that's for me. right. Dad was yelling out, and I was just crying. But anyways, uh, so <laughs> check them out. SpaceCoastFunGuide.com. You can check it out before you get here, and once you're in the market at any major uh, accommodation or attraction, pick up the Space Coast Fun Guide. Well, you'll learn again. What to see and do and where to and do it. where to do it. That sounds good. And we want to thank you both today for coming here. For, oh. well, we're allowing us to come here. You're already home. <laughs> you You're here. here. Well, thank you yeah. for coming. We're glad to be here. And this is just a, you know, we just want everybody to know that there's so much to do on Florida Space Coast. So that when you come to the area, now you have, have another place, another location that you can come to and, not, and experience and learn. And we just want to thank you guys for taking the time to really even educate us. I think we learned a few things ourselves. Always you know? do. So, yeah, I, I did. I, I learned uh, the 68 women. Wow. I, and I'd like to add to that because I got a couple of ex-wives I'd like to send out of <laughs> space. <laughs> Mom, turn this off. Don't Somehow listen. I kind of knew that was coming up. Uh, <laughs> that Alice to the moon. Right. To the moon. Oh, you to, the moon. Show. to the moon. So now next week we're going to be at the Melbourne oh. Orlando International Airport. I'm going to talk with representatives from the Allegiant Airline and with um, uh, uh, Rob, Rob Himmler, Himmler, who's the manager of communications and marketing there. And they're going to talk about Allegiant Airlines, which now has has nonstop flights 
from Melbourne to Nashville, Pittsburgh, and Concord, North Carolina. That's awesome. And I got to say, I have so many friends That's that Charlotte. have just went up to North Carolina because they were looking at the leaves change. It's amazing how many people have, you know, went up to leave Brevard County to go up just to see Because, mm-hmm. you know, we're, well, we're sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows here. And we, I you saw know, flights for like $39. 30, I know. Yeah. Can you yeah. believe that? Oh, wow. So going to Nashville. Bucks. Now's the time to do it. Come Works. on. Home yeah. of country music. Yeah. What a great place to go, right? Yeah. And and uh, for thirty nine dollars, I'll go just to fly up and fly back. I mean, just, just to say, my, I did my it. My gas tank is more than that, <laughs> right? <You> would, <laughs> he had like. A <laughs> I'm telling you, it's gonna it's gonna be great. And and also, we have a great weekend. Uh, if you're around, you know, you can come here to the uh, to the American Space Museum. But in addition, we have the this is the weekend for the uh, Warbird Air Museum. Yes. November thirteen and fourteen, free to get in for Florida residents and veterans. They've got a wonderful weekend planned. We were there last weekend, and we know all the wonderful things that are going to be happening there. Yeah. And we also have the Native Rhythms Festival going on at Wickham Park. So there's a lot to see and do here this weekend. So mm. we invite everybody to come here to Florida Space Coast, a great place to be. Again, thank you all very much. And we will see you all next week. That's Sir thank you. Stay curious. <laughs>